Marianne Williamson has been speaking out for her beliefs from a young age. My high school principal did not like me, and he called me a cagey revolutionary. Ooh. How prescient Ooh. he was. <laughs> I'm born in 1952, uh, so, you know, it was the tumult of the 60s. And um, we, uh, we printed, published a newspaper the underground watermelon, something that had watermelon in it. And it, I don't know, it was probably anti-Vietnam War, you know, something of that sort that he was trying to keep the lid on. That commitment to activism is now tempered by experience. Somebody told me when I turned 50, uh, 50 is the age past which you don't care what other people think anymore, which I also found to be true. Turning 60, I thought, not only do I not care what other people think, I have to say it. At 70, I'm only 71, so I'm only at the beginning. But I feel how different it is, but in a good way. I think a lot of it has to do with your spiritual beliefs. If you're afraid of death, then I guess getting older is really quite horrible. But if you're not, you know, if you have a sense of something more, it's pretty fantastic in a way. Williamson is on her second presidential campaign after running for the Democratic nomination in 2020. The first time, it was a, just a moment of clarity, a moment of, I'm going to run for president. And for about a month, I was just in such clarity about it. This time was very different. I'm no longer naive about what the situation is. So it took me months. Um, I knew I would be running into a burning building. And it is running into a burning building. More than the average American even knows. And I think in ways that would disturb the average American. But I ended up feeling that uh, God would give me some kind of internal fire retardant. And otherwise I'd spend a year of my life screaming at television. I hope this sounds okay, but I think those who are really involved in politics, for whatever reason, you meet the best and the worst of what humanity has to offer in some way. And I haven't figured that out, but that's what I've seen. I've seen the greatest kindness and people really just wanting to make the world a better place, America a better place than I've seen people who are the kind of people you weren't brought up to even be around. She took a break from the trail earlier this year for a joyous life milestone when she became a grandmother for the first time. I'm very happy for my daughter. She's married to a man. Uh, they're in love. He's a good husband. He's a good father. And she's so wild about this baby. Um, if I don't, every few hours, tell her how gorgeous that last picture was. Uh, and uh, so I'm thrilled for her, that's number one. My daughter's mother-in-law terms it, she calls it granny gazing. Because I find myself, so I stayed there for a month, and I find myself, I would just stare at her. I said, don't you find that we just, isn't it, aren't you in awe? Aren't you just looking at her? And, you know, she said, yeah, it's granny gazing. I said, I don't remember that. I don't remember that from when I had my daughter. And she said, that's because when you have your child, you're too busy. When you have a child, you're just so busy. But when you're the grandparent, you just, I even find that about pictures of her. Her daughter's family lives in London, which means Williamson is on a plane even more than your average presidential candidate. This is something that's really changed in America. I used to say I learned most of everything I know on airplanes because you're sitting next to someone that you wouldn't necessarily meet in any other circumstance. They don't know anything about you. They don't have any preconceived notions. And everybody's a little more aware of their mortality than usual. <laughs> so I would have really, really interesting conversations with people. America has changed. First of all, people sit down, they put in their earphones, they look on their tablet, and another thing people do is they close the shades. Yeah. The most amazing drama is going on out there. It's called clouds mm -hmm. <laughs> and sky. And nobody, the majority of people now, and so if you're not sitting next to the window, 
They have no, like, you don't want to look at that. And they put in their, and then something's changed. And now it's like, you say, hi, I'm Marianne. Some people go, hi. A lot of people like, I hope you don't think, you know, they, they don't say it, but I hope you don't think we're going to talk, you know. I remember one man actually saying to me, good. Williamson's status as a best-selling author and as the founder of several Southern California nonprofits has put her in the same room as several world-famous people. In her estimation, one truly stands out. And from writing books and the nonprofits, I have met a lot of celebrity-type people. There's one person in many, many people that I've met who are very famous and blah, blah, blah. You always see in the back of their eye, just in the back of their eye, don't forget who I am. There was one person and you felt in the back of her eye, please forget who I am. Please forget who I am. And it was almost like so we can have a normal conversation. One person where you really felt she was really trying, please forget who I am. Guess who it was? Jacqueline Onassis. Because she wanted to edit one of my books, and I met with her, and you just felt, you know, she'd become a book editor. And it makes sense, doesn't it? Because she felt would feel so trapped. It was more than celebrity. It was global obsession, and you could tell her desire was to have a normal conversation. And when it comes to conversations, Williamson says she loves these dining room table talks with New Hampshire voters. You were asking me personal questions here, and it's not just the situation. It's that this is American. We're comfortable with answering personal questions. There are some countries where this would be considered rude and, uh, you know, so I love how real we get as individuals.